Hi, Jim Micklick here, bringing you the Micklick's Minute. Today I'm at Robertson Ryan and Associates with Matt and Jeremy. Guys, thanks for having me out here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about getting a student in a field or career cluster placement that normally have to be 18 years old to be. So I talk to local contractors and they say they can't work with a student until they're 18 years old. I talk to the healthcare industry and they can't have a CNA unless they're 18 years of age. I look to my manufacturing partners and they say we need students after they're 18 and graduated. But as we look to bridge the gap K-12 education to industry and help fill the skills gap or fill the skills gap need, how can we do that? There's a program that we work with called Youth Apprenticeships through the Department of Workforce Development. And Matt and Jeremy are going to talk to you a little bit today about how you can work with a student that's not 18 years of age in your industry prepping and training. Guys, can you explain a little bit about that program and how that works from the insurance perspective? Yeah, first off, work comp, <clears throat> work comp is not limited to people that are 18 years old or older. So the one thing I would recommend for the employers is to not shy away from employees or, or youth apprenticeships be, just because they're under 17. The work comp laws and the benefits still apply, regardless of age, regardless of negligence. Um, so that's the first thing that I would press upon the employers is that don't hesitate to do it because work comp can't be denied. It is not reduced or limited benefits. And Matt, just a little bit on the youth apprenticeship options. Students have to be between 16 and 18 years of age in their junior or senior year of high school. And you're saying workman's comp, whether you're 16 years old or you're 65 years old, applies the same to anyone in the industry that's working. Yes, absolutely. If they're injured as a result of their employment, regardless of age, they're covered. They're covered for their medical bills, they're covered for lost wages, there's no deductible. Um, so it doesn't matter the age um, at all. 16, 70, whatever it is, they're covered. Jeremy, anything to add? Yeah, as long, I mean, they're being paid as though they're uh, an employee of the organization, therefore they're be covered under the workers' compensation policy in the event that they were injured while they were working on the job. So, guys, I'm going to field the next question for you. So, I meet with a local contractor. Jim, I'm in dire need of young, skilled talent. How do I get them in? I say, hey, I got a perfect kid for you. He wants to go into electrical, find his niche, and take classes after high school. Ah, is he 18 years old? The question I always get. I say, he's 17 years old. We have a youth apprenticeship option you work for. And they tell me, no, I cannot work with him until he's 18 because my insurance carrier is, is telling me that. Can you fill us in a little bit on why they're saying that and how we can educate our community, our members, our employers that it is okay and insurance isn't a hang-up for a youth apprenticeship student? Sure. Um, there's a few industries and a few uh, specific work environments that require the age of 18, but for the most part, um, anybody under 18 can still do those jobs. There's probably this perception from either their insurance agent or their insurance carrier that they're not able to have people that are under 18, uh, but the reality is as long as we provide some documentation about what's happening, who they're working with, who their mentors are, and safety protocols in place, there shouldn't be an issue with somebody being under age 18. Matt, anything to add on that? Yeah, you know, if they're hearing that, it might be from an underwriting perspective so that the insurance companies or the underwriters might not feel comfortable maybe having somebody 18 or under. Now usually, from our experience, we don't know who they're hiring. We don't know if they're 18, 17, 16, or 75, or, or 80 for that matter. So it could be more of an underwriting consideration, but it's certainly not um, a disqualifier for coverage or anything like that. And one thing you guys talked a little bit about, I met you at a Pathways conference kind of trying to open up people's perspectives to get people in youth apprenticeships at a younger age working in these companies. Uh, and I thought you guys had a really good suggestion at that point in time. If there's ever a question about a piece of machinery or equipment, call your insurance carrier up and have them come out and look at it. Because uh, there's been so many technology advancements that, like, let's say back in the day, students can't use a cutter because they can cut their hand off. Nowadays, right hand touches this safety lab, left hand touches this safety one, right foot goes on this pedal, left foot goes on this pedal, and it becomes near impossible to actually hurt yourself. Is that still your recommendation, a good practice for employers if they have an insurance agent saying, no, hey, come out, look what we want them to do, and, and you know see what's going on if it's okay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the insurance carriers are, are excited to get out and see the clients, to talk to them, to work with them about safety, to get their loss prevention people in, in place and help them prevent claims from happening. So they would, would love the opportunity to come out and see the, the machinery and equipment that's being used and offer any suggestions if they did feel that there was something that was an issue. Um, we can use, use in-house loss control as well. So either the carrier or the insurance company agency can use their loss control to help with those options. I think that's a good suggestion regardless of the youth apprenticeship program or not. I mean, just for, for the safety of all employees and, and everything else, but certainly I think that's, that's welcome. And, and as Jeremy mentioned, they love to come out and, and look at that. So guys, I think I'm just talking about youth apprenticeships and trying to bridge that gap and the skills 
the workforce skills gap that we have too. Anything else that we're not hitting on today that you'd like to add or, or tell to our audience, whether it's an insurance carrier, an employer, or a student, a family that's looking to get into these fields? The only thing I would say is for, for the families, for the students, and for the employers is I think it's a great avenue. I think especially in today's economy, today's labor market, great wages out there, great living uh, wages, great jobs, great employers, and I would uh, encourage people to explore that. Uh, might not be the fit for everybody, but I certainly wouldn't let um, at least the workers' comp be any consideration at all. Jeremy, anything we're missing you want to add? Um, no, that was my thought as well. I wouldn't let the workers' compensation piece be a limitation of, of getting somebody involved with this program. Um, it's a great way for them to learn skills, to, to have a lifelong um, great opportunity for occupation and for make a living. Um, so the earlier they can start, the better. That's a great point on there. So again, we're talking about youth apprenticeship programs and trying to educate our youth into great professions that can be career, career routes for them that they're going to make a lot of money in and how we spark that interest, get them involved with your company before they're even 18 years old and leaving high school. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out and contact me and I can talk from a perspective of the district and working with the Department of Workforce Development. Um, reach out to your insurance agency and if we all work together, we can help bridge this gap. Again, gentlemen, thank you for your time today. Uh, this is Jim Micklick here at Robertson, Robertson Ryan and Associates with Matt and Jeremy talking to you about youth apprenticeships and getting your students to work. Have a great day.